having a good evening or maybe you're having a good morning wherever you're watching from. I know if you're in Dubai or you're in the Philippines or Australia, it's morning there and you are already into Wednesday and we are still living out Wednesday, but it's been a great day, Pastor Al, just to be alive. Hey, I'm with you. I'm breathing, <laughs> inhaling, exhaling, praising God, so it's a good day. Well, I know you had quite about um, you had quite about well, the <laughs> cold here last week, and uh, uh, I, I guess you probably used I think you said two or three boxes of Kleenex of the big boxes of the big boxes yeah, in, in just a few days. So that, you know, but we, we don't want to rehash that because we're <laughs> we talking, don't want to think we, negative. That's do we? right. <laughs> 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 we got to go the other direction. <laughs> oh. Well, I want to say hello to Beth and uh, from down in um, Apollo Beach, Florida. And I want to say hello to my daughter, Tammy, who is watching, uh, and quite a few others that I don't uh, see yet that's coming on. And then, of course, I want to say uh, blessings to all the people that's watching on all the different apps from wherever you're watching in the world. And it's a great joy to ha have you with us. And Pastor Al and myself, are, uh, let me just repeat it again in case you missed our opening, that we are going to be talking about uh, not allowing ourselves to stay in negative thinking or overcoming negative, negative thinking. thinking. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of easy to get into negative thinking, would you say? I think it is. I think it's just as easy to get into positive thinking once you make the transition. Well, you know, it's a choice. That's right. It's a choice on either one, whether you want to think negative or you want to think positive. And, and you know, I'm not just thinking about positive thinking. I'm thinking about thinking right from the Bible. And, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, and it, it covers so much, Pastor Al, mm -hmm. and it's in Philippians 4 and 8. And if you're going to read that, well, you can just read it again because I'm going to read it yeah, first. Well, I, actually, I've got chapters 3 and 4 because I'm going to tell folks tonight, don't just read the verse that we're going to emphasize a lot, but read both chapters, 3 and 4, and you get the whole story. Well, that's that's good. That's good. But, you know, just in this verse, there is so many power-packed things if we would live by just just the things in this verse that the Apostle Paul is really encouraging us to do. Um, well, hi, Liz Cobble. Um, it's so good to ha see you watching from over in Chattanooga. You're just such a blessing, and we thank God for you, and we have some great memories. Pastor Sharon and I have great memories of you and your family. 
Um, and so it's good to have you watching with us and hope you can stay on because we got some really good stuff to say and talk about. And so it's a joy to, to have you on. Sharon's not on just yet. She stays home on Tuesday night and watches our great granddaughter. So our, Dave, our David can be here uh, taking care of all the technical stuff. So anyway, uh, she watches when she gets Jordan uh, fixed. Jordan's going to be eight in August and going on 16, of course. But um, uh, Jordan is a blessing. And all of you that's watching, Cliff Cook, Richard Harper, Solly Roya from Toronto, uh, Shirley Fuller from over in Arkansas, uh, my daughter, Beth Weaver, we mentioned you a few minutes ago, Marilyn from down in Florida, and it'll get pick up as we go. And Buddy Williams, hello, my brothers. May God bless you tonight as you minister to God's people. Will you just be praying for us, Buddy? Because you're just an awesome man of God. I have so much respect for you. And I guess, I guess I've known you for probably 50 years or maybe close to. And um, you're still preaching the same gospel. And uh, that's wonderful. And I am too. You know, I'm just standing on the word. But I was going to read this uh, uh, verse of scripture in Philippians 4 and 8. I learned this scripture many years ago. And it really helped me because, you know, I was around a lot of negative people. And boy, and you know, I was around negative preachers that, that wanted to preach and prophesy gloom and doom and and talk about, you know, destruction and how famine is coming and all of this kind One of stuff. One of them was named D.T. Well, I want to call no <laughs> names now. Watch it there. Well, well that's just initials. <laughs> Nobody Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, they was always <laughs> preaching about the negative stuff and, and scaring people, yeah. you know. And, and, you know, God's right the opposite. God is good. God doesn't scare people. God doesn't uh, say, I'm going to take things away from you. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to send judgment on you, but uh, the scripture says, um, brethren, whatsoever things are true. You know, now there's a lot of true things that, that goes on, that, um, but he's talking about the, the word of God, thinking on the good things of the word of God. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue or life, if, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. And so, you know, when you put all of those things together and you just start doing that, your life will get better. Absolutely. Now, what translation do you have, Pastor? I'm reading now the New King James. All right, let me read that same verse out of the Living Bible. And now, brothers, as I close this letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts. Mm. I like the way that it puts this. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine, good things in other people. Oh, wow. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about. Wow. I like that part. <laughs> Think on the things that's good in other people. Amen. And, you know, there's a, again, I don't want to be negative here, but I, that's what we're talking about. A lot of people always see the bad in people or find the negative or pick and, and see what they're doing wrong. But I, I, I like to do what that scripture says. Fix your thoughts on the Lord or on the things that's good. And then what part, read that part again about people. Uh, think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell, dwell on the fine good things in others. Oh, wow. Well, just think about that me when you're... <laughs> I am. I'm going to think about all, uh, both good things that I know about you. I'm going to keep both of those on my mind. <laughs> so, so you're going to keep the two things you're good about me. <laughs> well, you know what, folks? Uh, this is what Jesus is. We have fun when we serve Jesus. Well, you know, Bob Harrington used to say it. It's fun being saved. Well, it is. It really is. And, you know, some, some people say, well, you know, it's really hard to be a Christian. It's really hard to be saved. Well, you know, I question if they're saved, if they're going to exactly. say it's hard to be a Christian and exactly. it's hard to be saved. To me, it's good to be saved and it's easy.
easy to be saved. It's not always easy to do the right thing, <laughs> but uh, 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 being saved is, is the easy part of it. Anyway, I want to say hello to Judy, and I want to say uh, hello to Tina. I want to say hello to Deborah. It's good to have you back tonight. Uh, I, I'm just not taking the time to, we're not our, our staff and stuff of inviting people. We're just, just doing this because we've been doing it long enough, and if people want to watch, they can, and if they Amen. don't, then okay, you know, it's just, just whatever. But we're glad to see you back, Basilo from over in the Philippines, Cheryl, Don Rattray. Hey, you ain't been around for a while, my brother. You are absolutely an incredible brother, and I'm so good. And I remember when you used to pay, play the bass for us, I, when I found out you played the bass, it shocked me. I would have never dreamed that you was a bass player and then not only a bass player, but a very good one. Hey, and you can come back to Experience Life Church and play bass anytime you want Absolutely. to. Absolutely. We need somebody right now to we pick do. that bass. Oh, and he can, he can play that bass. Can he? He can play that bass really good. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we, we are great. Uh, uh, to, it's great to have you here, Joyce. Uh, Ann Wilson and um, Lori has a job interview tomorrow. Pray for God's will. We will be doing that. We will be praying for her. Anyway, uh, we're going to get on with the um, topic tonight because there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to negative thinking because our world, well, let me, let me go, put it, go start it another way. Our news our news is filled with negative things. And you know, most of the time, the news gives you a part truth, a part truth, and then they put to it a slant that, that um, they want to. And so that's why our president calls it fake news. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, 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 he doesn't have a problem at all of, um, of uh, saying that uh, um, he doesn't have a problem at all of talking about the news and saying it's fake news. And most of it is. Well, you know, when you go to court, uh, they want you to put your hand on the Bible, hold up your hand, and say they promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And that's what I think President Trump is saying. <laughs> the, the media knows how to tell a part truth or a half truth and a part truth or a half truth is a lie. That's right, and it's negative. That's right. And you know, um, my wife, she she she, she watches. Um, well, you know, I I don't watch the news every night, but she she's really likes to watch the the evening news, and uh, uh, she watches ABC, and it comes on with that, mm-hmm. you know, and it does, and then then they they give you the headline stories, and every one of them are negative, and usually, yeah. usually, mm-hmm. the headline story is the President of the United States of America. Uh, well, ABC, a big con. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Alicia, bless you so much. I'm watching and love your message. Thank you so much, Alicia. But anyway, they come on and their leads most of the time, it, the lead story is the president. And you know, I've been around a few years now, Pastor Al, mm-hmm. as you well know. Uh, and uh, I've watched uh, the news for a long time, but I have never, ever seen a president picked on mm-hmm. as much as this one. And you know, one of the things that is happening, he does what he says he'll do. Absolutely. You know, he, he, he is not a president that just makes a bunch of, that made a bunch of promises to get elected. Mm-hmm. But I remember the time he, he got swore in before the day was over, he was already working. He was already <laughs> working and he works all the time just trying to get stuff done. And, uh, you know, people want to think negative about our president. They do. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are thinking negative about everything he says. He can't do anything right. Well, that's negative thinking. Yeah, and he's not overpaid. Oh, he's not overpaid, and, you know, he doesn't need money. <laughs> and he doesn't take it. <laughs> he doesn't take his salary, so he's doing what he's doing That's because right. he wants to help the American people, and he's concerned, too, with other countries as well. And you know, and, what you're talking about there, Pastor, is this. Uh, you're talking about the negative stories, and, and it's, they're all negative about the president. 
Nobody wants to. I've say never heard. I've, I've really never heard the news give him any credit for any good thing he's done. No, especially uh, the ones he calls the fake news, the ABC, NBC, CBS, those main yes. uh, you know stations. They just don't have anything positive to say about the president or anyone who works for him. It's <laughs> like the whole shebang is down the tubes as far as they're concerned. Well, you know, uh, when the Mueller report come out, you know, mm -hmm. everybody thought, well, the Mueller report, he, he's going down the tube. We're going to be able to impeach him now, you know. But, you know, I, I, he's a wealthy man, and he's been, got businesses all over the world, and he's a smart man. Yes. A lot of people don't give him credit for that, but he couldn't be where he is yeah. in business or never would have reached that plateau in business if he didn't have right. uh, some smarts and, and a positive person. Well, he's, a, he's not a smooth talker. He's a street fighter. <laughs> yes, he, so you got the, that right. He's not a smooth talker, and he's not a smooth, he he's not a smooth tweeter either. <laughs> no, he's not. He, well, he, sometimes, you know, if I could advise the president, I don't know if he would listen or not. I don't he, think he's so. He's his own person. But I'd say, you know, just ease up a little bit because sometimes you make your own self look bad. And he don't need any help because they're going to make him look bad at every turn. Well, that's true. That's true. But you know what? He just keeps digging in and keeps going on. And, and you know, I didn't mean to get sidetracked by this. But, 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 but he is positive, Pastor. What well, we're that's, saying. that's the thing. He's and no matter, no matter what kind of stones is thrown, thrown to him by the senators, the Congress people, by the people, the protesters, you know, he seems to be resilient and just keep the vision in mind and stay focused. Yes. You know, as I was preaching Sunday, I was talking about Joseph and how Joseph Kept, he had to be thinking positive all the time. He couldn't be thinking negative. He, he had to, yes, you're right, because I think he would have just uh, threw in the towel and given up had he thought wrongly. Well, and, and you know, you look at it, Pastor Al, and, and, and you know, he was about 17 years of age mm -hmm. when this happened right. to him, and for a 17-year-old, um, uh, President Trump, Richard Harper, is that you said that? Yes, President Trump's integrity will preserve him. Well, you're right. You're right. You know, and then that's what that's what we are partly talking about tonight is integrity, because when you are a person of integrity, you're not going to be a pessimist and you're not going to be thinking negative. You're not going to be thinking doubt and unbelief, but you're going to be thinking about uh, pursuing the right things, as I talked about Joseph uh, this particular Sunday that I'm just mentioning here, he's about 17 years of age when he left home. Uh, could you imagine being um, uh, put in a pit, then your other brother comes and gets you out, and then they sell you, and then they take you down to Egypt and, and put you on a, a slave block and an auction, and of course Potiphar bought him. I, I, you know, but he never saw himself the way he was being treated. He saw himself the way the vision God gave Yeah, him. I think he, he maintained the dream. Yes. Because they made fun of the dream, didn't even believe in the dream. But I think the thing that, that kept Joseph was he never forgot the dream. Right. And, and I don't think he fully understood what it meant right. when he had it. But as it developed along, and, and something that's always uh, amazed me, or I've, I've kind of latched on to, is throughout the story of Joseph, you'll find six words every time he went through something. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Mm. And wow. the Lord was with, every single time, whatever he went through. Now, I don't know if Joseph always knew the Lord was with him or was aware of it, because sometimes, you know, we're not aware right. of God's presence when we should be sometimes. Right. We allow the circumstances or we allow the things that are around us. And he could have easily done that because he was surrounded by negativity every turn of his life for a number of years. I mean, everything, I mean, everything around him, you know, like his brothers and then, um, then when the Ishmaelites sold him, took him down and put, uh, sold him, Potiphar bought him and uh, took him home. And then the continual, and, and you know, we don't know how long this went on. No. Of, of, well, um, I think you said Potiphar's what, he was work. there 11 years? Yes, he was there 11 mm -hmm. years. And um, 
And in these 11 years, he found favor with Potiphar, obviously, but... And Mrs. Potiphar kind of liked him, too. Well, that's the, that's the <laughs> point I was getting to. Miss Potiphar really liked him. And, uh, you know, she was, she was wanting to have adultery with him. But the scripture says over and over and over again. Yes. And so he had to overcome this negativity... Uh, not just once, right. not just twice. Right. And some people, they get caught in, in the trap of thinking the wrong thing. Yes. And uh, he decided he was going to think the right thing instead of the wrong thing. And so um, I, I believe that anyone that's a child of God, if they really want the blessings of God on their life, they need to learn how to get out of the rut of talking negative and thinking negative and looking at the bad side because the bad side's everywhere you turn. It yes. makes no difference where you look. There's something bad going on. And, and, and you know, it seems like, Pastor Al, in your, yours and my time when we were younger, um, things were different, but now that we are uh, mature, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that we're mature. Uh, we got the media that we have. We got social media. We got uh, all these different things. So everything is known instantly anymore. Yes. And for young people, uh, you know, I didn't know what 17 year olds know today. You know, I didn't know that because it wasn't available to me. Right. But just the thought of Joseph being 17 and being able to keep his composure when all of this happened. And then you say there that the Lord was with him. And, and many people don't want to recognize when they're in negative situations that God's still there. Yes. Now, it's easy uh, to lose sight of the presence of God because we don't always feel it. And, yes. and, and if, we, if we're waiting for feelings to come, then we're easily defeated. And Satan knows that. I mean, you know, Jesus himself, when he was in the wilderness and Satan came to him, he tried to mess with Jesus' mind. That's where he went first. Right. If you are who you say you are, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus refused to make bread for the devil. He, he could have. He could have. But he, he knew that would not be within the will of God. And so he just, and this is what a main part of what we're talking about tonight, Jesus replaced the thoughts of negativity, the thoughts that were wrong. He replaced those thoughts with the Word of God when he said, it is written. So if you don't think it's important to know the Word of God, friends, uh, that's how Jesus overcame the enemy at every turn in his life because he was permeated with his Father's Word. Jesus said, I of my own self do nothing, only what the Father bids me to do. So he was totally Spirit-led. And a lot of times we want to think, well, he was Jesus. He was the Son of God, yes, but he was also 100% man. And, and he went through these trials just like you and I would go through these trials. And he did that to show us because he said, I came as your example. An example, when I, when I was in school, they put an example on the board. That example was to show us how to do it. And Jesus came and lived his life to show us how to live life. And if we want to overcome negativity and learn how to speak properly and how to speak positively and how to speak, I say, spiritually, then we've got to know the Word of God. Well, the Word says, like you said, it, uh, Jesus said, it is written, and you said he replaced the negative things that Satan would say to him. He said, you know, and obviously, you know, Jesus without food for 40 days. He was hungry. He was hungry, and, and when he said to him, you, you know, make these stones become bread, and then he said, it's written, and that man shall not live by bread only, but by every word, every that, comes, word. word that comes out of every the mouth word. of God. And so I believe if we could go back to the examples in the Bible, if everyone would, would hear us tonight and realize what we're saying is that we all have negative things happen to us. Negative yes. experiences come, and, but you replace the negative thought 
with something good with the Word of God. Yes. You say, well, I've done that and it didn't change. Well, it's still, it's better to get a good attitude and to think good than it is to just drown in those negative thinking. Jesus didn't stay there. He, well, with, with, when Satan said that, he, he didn't say that. Exactly. And, 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 and Jesus didn't just go through that for a few minutes. He went through it for 40 days and 40 nights. And look how many years, years Joseph went through it. Yes, it was, it was about, you know, well, you know, for instance, you know, the, when Joseph interpreted the dream for the uh, butler yes, and the, the baker, baker. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, he told, told him, he said, remember me when you yeah. get before no, the they king. Forgot him. They forgot him. And of course, the, the baker, <laughs> he lost his life. That's and right. so he, couldn't he couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, but <laughs> he couldn't remember him because he lost his life. But the butler, when he was restored, he didn't want to think back to his prison days. And so exactly. uh, he didn't remember Joseph until there was a time. And, and the Bible said it was two years. So, yes. uh, you know, there was 13 years we see of Joseph living in a negative environment. Yes. 13 years, negative things happened. Abandoned from his father and his younger brother that he loved. And uh, maybe he didn't miss those other brothers that much. Well, they all betrayed him, though, and I think that hurt him. Well, of course I don't it think hurt he him. he realized that they were, that they hated him like I don't did. think he knew that. No. I don't think he knew that. But he, he had to hold on, like I said, to his dream. What we're trying to let all of you know tonight is that don't expect, I mean, so many Christians, it really kind of bugs me sometimes that we think it ought to be easy for us. We think that because we're Christians, because we're saved, that we shouldn't go through anything. And that's just, you're not going to find any Bible for that. I mean, everybody we're talking about, if you want, we can talk about Joseph, we can talk about Jesus, we can talk about David, whoever you want to talk about. They went through some stuff. And they had to think right. And sometimes we have to learn how to think. See, it's, it's in our Adamic nature, our old nature, to think like Adam, to think like fallen man. But that's why Jesus said, when I came, I came as your example because now I want you to think like the new man, the born again man. I want you to think like, like I think. And then he said, let the mind, the scripture says, let the mind of Jesus be in you. And, and let simply means to allow. The, the mind is there. It's available. The thoughts of God, the Word of God is available. Some of us have 10, 15, 20 Bibles in our home, all these translations. And, and we say, well, you know, I, I can't remember what the Lord said about this. Well, pick up one of them 15 Bibles and find some translation that really speaks to you. That's why in the beginning, I, I, I had read the same verses in the Living Bible. And, and what it does, it just amplifies. Sure makes it a little bit plainer. It doesn't take away or destroy the, you know, the initial language, like uh, uh, Michael Lolly would say in the Hebrew, you know, and I need Michael here tonight because I don't know that, uh, how, to, how to say it in the Hebrew, but I know this, whatever it translates from the Hebrew into this, I understand that. This speaks my, what I'm saying is God's word speaks everyone's language. It does, it does, and when we go to the word, when we go to the word, we don't need to do it because we feel like it's an obligation. It's, right. it's, it's like eating food. You know, I don't think very many people sit down to the table and I'm obligated to eat. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're excited. I think that. they're excited and they're looking for the best thing that they can find to, to uh, satisfy their appetite. And so... That's what the Word of God is to me. It, 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 it satisfies my appetite. You know, you were talking about David and some of the things in the Old Testament, and but we look at the apostles oh, and yeah. the apostles. You know, just like one time they put Paul in a basket mm -hmm. to get him out. To save him. Yeah, because it was after his life. Right. And, and he didn't complain that he had to get in this basket. And, and these people took him to another place. And, and, and you know, uh, when he's standing before King Agrippa um, in Acts 26 and 2, he said, Oh, King, I think myself happy. 
And he had just been, I mean, he's in prison, and mm -hmm. he's telling the king, I think myself happy. Somebody said, well, I can't be happy where I am. I can't be happy uh, with this going on, and I can't be happy with that going on. And, you know, kids, you know, parenting this day and time, parenting this day and time is, ooh, Lord of mercy. I, I want to say it again, Lord of mercy. <laughs> parenting this day and time, it was hard enough for me. <laughs> it was hard enough for me for our, our, our children. Uh, you know, they got to experiment uh, with the world, and, and um, you know, that, that was hard. And I didn't know what to do sometimes. Right. You know, I didn't know what to do every time. But you know what? I've learned so much, Pastor Al, I would say in the last 20 years, uh, not that I didn't learn and continue to grow, right. but I think especially in the last 10 years, it's just been like, it's just been like, I get up in the morning and I, uh, I've got, I don't know how many scriptures I've got on my prayer list, mm -hmm. but I read those scriptures every morning before I pray for anybody. I read those scriptures because it's it's things that I need to remember throughout the day. You're These programming or something. I am. I and am. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And where they're located and and I want to read those scriptures and I want to put them in my mind. And then I get down to um, Ephesians chapter six and where Paul said to put on the whole armor of God. Well, I just I just stop at that scripture and I just start praying and saying, Lord, help my thought pattern yes, today. Yes. Help my thought pattern today that no matter what unscheduled event could possibly happen or what I could face, help me to think the right thoughts and let the word be in my subconscious. Yes, yes. And then I pray over my ears. Let me let me only listen to the things that will uh, bring good things to me. Yes. Let me not listen to things that's going to tear me up and help my mouth to speak words of life yes. instead of words of yes. death. Yes, and David said, I set no wicked thing before my eyes. So you exactly, know, we, we, we need to pray those prayers you're talking about. Well, and I do, and it helps me to be positive because I, I pray over my eyes. You know, there's scripture over in Revelation that talks about anoint your eyes with the eye salve. So I just say, Lord, anoint my eyes with that eye salve and let me not just see the problems that I'm faced with, but let me see by revelation. Let me see through the word. Let me Amen. see through your thoughts so I don't see and begin to be negative in a situation that I become... I become uh, strong or I stay strong through what, what you know, some days is good days. <laughs> yeah, every day is not the same. We wish our victory days or our feel good days and we get back to feeling again. W wouldn't it be great if we felt the presence of God all the time? Because then we really wouldn't have to have much faith whatsoever because we'd be living in that realm of feeling the presence of God. Right. And we talk so much about we walk by faith and not by sight, and we're thinking about other things, but that also applies to whatever trial you're going through. You walk by faith and not by sight. Whatever situation, circumstances surround you, you're still walking by faith and not by sight. And if you walk by faith, what do we have faith in? You know, we have faith in God, for sure. Sure. And God and His Word are the same. Yeah. You know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So if we have faith in God, and, and, and Hebrews 11 tells us without faith, we can't even please God. You, you first got to believe that God is, and secondly, that God is a rewarder of those who seek Him how? Mm. Diligently. God is not available to casual seekers. That's right. And, and some Christians don't like that. And they say, well, I, I wish I had what so-and-so had, or I wish that, well, then stop being a casual seeker and be a diligent seeker. And then you will find out how to think, you will find out how to speak, and you will find out how to act because the Holy Spirit knows how to do all three of those things. He knows how. He knows how. Deborah said uh, Jesus died on the cross, but he arose from the dead. A lot of us want to think of him dying, but we need to think about him rising up. Well, see, that's... Both are important. Yes. Both are important because on the cross he took the sin 
and he took all of our sins. He took the sins of the people in the past. But when he rose, the Bible said he was the firstborn from the dead. Absolutely. So he was the firstborn. He was the first person to ever be born from spiritual death to spiritual life. And so he was the firstborn. And after him, there's been many born. And so I like to I'm think. I'm one of them. Amen. And I, I do like to think of it. And, you know, we got uh, Resurrection Sunday coming up here it's pretty soon. Up. And, uh, you know, I was going to have your son preach. But my wife said, you know, uh, um, <laughs> she said, you know, I've been thinking. Y'all listen to this. She said, I've been thinking. I said, you've been thinking. I know you think all the time. <laughs> I said, you're always thinking. She, I, she said, but I, I think I'm going to, uh, I want to speak on Easter Sunday morning. And she said, God's been putting a message in my heart. Wonderful. So uh, Pastor Sharon is going to preach on Sunday morning. So your son just have to go somewhere else this time. <laughs> I, I think he's going somewhere else. I'll have to find out. I think he's got somewhere else to go. Uh, and he checked with me and he was real sweet about it. And uh, I Well, told I'm, him, I'm anxious to hear Pastor Sharon. I don't think I've heard her since I've been here. Well, you, you, well, she's she she's not one. Well, she used to do more, but uh, and I say this complimentary and positively. But since you're here, she uh, she'd rather sit and hear you as her have to do it. So well, I appreciate that. But I, what I was thinking was she probably thinks, well, if, if Pastor Al would shut up, I could talk. <laughs> Well, she's going to be speaking. I don't know the title of her message, but she's going to be speaking. And I'm really excited because she's planning already for it. She's praying already. She's getting things um, all done. And, and so I like, I love, you know what, I love to think about Resurrection Sunday. Yes. I, I really do because on Resurrection Sunday, the, the name of Jesus and churches all over their heaven. All over the world. All over talking Amen. about Jesus. And so... To me, uh, uh, the the resurrection is something good to think about, and I want I want people to to tonight that's listening or in the morning. I just saw um, Janet from Dubai, so I don't know. I know it's early. Um, I, I don't know what time it is in Dubai right now. Uh, I think y'all are ten hours or ten hours ahead. Um, but anyway. Uh, oh, she's going to be preaching. She said she's going to be preaching. Here she is talking to me. Healing in the house. There's going to, her, her message title is Healing in the House. Amen. Well, I, There's a song. It is a song. There's a healer in the house. Yes, that's today. where she got her. All I right. think she told me that. I think she told me that. I remember now. She told me I didn't remember it till just now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's where she. Uh, got she, the message? Yeah. Well, sometimes some of my sermons and messages oh, comes from titles some songs, of songs. Absolutely. And you said you had a song that you wanted to talk <laughs> about. Well, I, this is going to kind of, you know, maybe switch gears a little bit here. But we were talking about how people can be so negative, you know. And the world, if we're not careful, the world will program us for negativity. And I just wrote down six songs. Now these are secular songs, but I probably if I'd have gone into the, the, the world of Christendom music, I might could have found some negativity in some of the songs we sing. We have to be careful. Yeah, you we can do. sing a lie as well as tell one. Yeah, well, I used to sing a few negative yeah, yeah, songs and yeah. didn't realize I was. I'm going up the rough side of, of the, the mountain. See, now, let, go ahead. We, we need to really get you cranked up. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to sing that song because I don't want to think about going up the rough side of the no, mountain. You've been up enough rough I've sides. Been up, I've been up enough of them, so I don't want to be singing that song. Well, here is an old Beatles song. The title of this old Beatles song was Eight Days a Week. I'm a loser. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know there was that many days in a week, but I guess that just means that they're a loser, period, no hope for them. Here's a song by Montgomery Gentry called Long Line of Losers. Oh, my. So not much hope there. Warren, I, I don't know how, how I don't know these singers, but Warren Zevon or Zevon, he sings a song called Poor, Poor, Pitiful Me. Oh my That's goodness. almost like the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> and then the Hollies sing a song, King Midas in reverse. You know, everything now? King Midas touched turned to gold, so everything they touch turns to dust, <laughs> I guess. King Midas in reverse. And then the Little River Band sings a song, Lonesome Loser. 
And finally, both Jerry Lee Lewis and Ray Charles sang the old song, Born to lose, <laughs> I've lived my life in vain. Just makes your tears want to roll, doesn't it? <laughs> I was thinking of that song when you was going down through there, and I'm thinking, how could anybody do that, that they're, they're, they want to sing Born to Lose? I, I, I was, oh, oh ooh, that just stirs me up. I was not born to lose. No. I was born to win because I'm a child of God. I'm a part of a chosen generation, Amen. a holy nation, Amen. a royal priesthood, a purchased people that's been called out of darkness, out of darkness. into his marvelous, marvelous light. light. So therefore, I or you, let me put it, you and I were not born to lose. Amen. You know, Ray Charles and oh, Jerry, I Lee, Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis and I, I, I think Elvis Presley. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm the, sure a lot more people say yeah. you know. uh, And you know, I talk a lot about the song that that I heard uh, um, um, George Jones used to sing all the time, if drinking don't kill you, her memory's well. So. <laughs> well, my wife's dad was a trucker, and for most of his life he was not saved, he was not a Christian. And actually at his funeral I, I sung a few songs that were his favorite on the road, and one of them was, Six days on the road and I'm going to make it home tonight. And the other one was, I'm a honky-tonk man, <laughs> and I don't have to stop. I love to give the girls a whirl to the music of the old jukebox. But when my money's all gone, I'm on the telephone crying, hey, hey, mama, can your daddy come home? <laughs> and that was what he did. He was a womanizer. Thank God he got saved before he died. Amen. Hey, that is good. But he was a negative person, and, and he liked all that kind of stuff. But you see, he had to learn how to change his language when the Holy Spirit changed his life. And, and if you're a Christian believer right now and you're thinking, well, it's not as easy as you two guys are trying to make it, that all we've got to do is change the way we think and change the way we talk, uh, I didn't say it was easy, but I said it was, it was the formula. It is the solution. It is what God tells us to do. And everything that God tells us to do is not easy but we have to practice it. You know, when I was in school, there wasn't a whole lot that was easy for me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I had to apply and study and press through. I had to practice. And you know that old saying, practice makes perfect. That's a lie, unless you practice perfect. <laughs> if you practice perfectly, then proud. But if you practice with mistakes, you're going to say That's mistakes. Exactly right. so That's exactly right. So remember that the Word of God is not full of negativity. It has no mistakes in it. So when you program yourself, like you say you do in the mornings when you pray, before you pray, program, he just gave you a great idea to program yourself yeah. with the Word of God so that when you go out for the day, you're full of the Word of God. That's right. What better thing to be full of than to be full of the Word of God? Well, see, it really, it really helps me pace myself because you, you have no idea, you and I, or the people that's with us, uh, we have no idea what this thing is going to bring us, what kind of news it's going oh, to bring absolutely. us. And not only the phone, but, you know, we just don't know, even though we're Christians. Yes. Even though we're Christians, the Bible didn't say anywhere in the world that we wouldn't go through things. But he give us a, an answer or he give us the word to know what to do. Yes. And I, I, I want to come back to this one more time simply for people to understand that I don't have this as a form as I do this, the scriptures, you know. The Bible says in uh, St. John 16, 23 and 24, and this is, this is the one I really start my prayer with. And it says, in that day you shall ask me nothing, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to mm -hmm. you. Until now you've asked nothing in my name, but whatever you ask, you will receive that your joy might be full. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, uh, I pray that because I want my joy to be full, whether I have the physical answers to my prayer today or not. Yes. I want the joy in my heart mm -hmm. until the physical answers 
do manifest. Amen. And so when I start with that scripture and I start start uh, I read that and and then I I have other scriptures and one of the scriptures that I read is in second Timothy first Timothy 2 1 and 2 and Paul said I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made yes. for all, all men, men for all men mm -hmm. and for kings and all in authority and then on down in Ephesians 6 and 18 praying uh, well praying with all prayer all That's kinds right. of prayer. Mm -hmm. And then it also says praying for all the saints. And so I try to get this full in my mind that my prayer time is not just about me and what oh, I yeah. want and what I'm going to get. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, you know, I, I think if, if our prayer time is just about us, we don't really understand prayer. Because God wants us to pray as a communication with Him. And sometimes we need to shut up why we pray. That's true. And listen for his response. That's true. I was talking to my doctor this week, one of my doctors. Uh, he's an Indian and he's a Christian. Uh, and he was talking about prayer, you know, and he said, we, we, we've sometimes missed the boat as Christians that we think that prayer is a, a, a want list. You know, well, exactly. God, I want this or I need this or you need to work something out over here, my boss, something on my job. It's always about us. And God doesn't mind that we make petitions. He says, make our petitions known. But that's just one, I would say, small part of prayer. Because once you learn and you develop a prayer life, your whole thrust is to be with God, yes. to spend time with God. And uh, you know, there was that, uh, that song that Tammy Faye Baker sang years ago on the old PTO club. He was there all the mm. time waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. That breaks me up sometimes. Sure. When I know that uh, there may have been times, when, not may, there were times in my life when God was there and I didn't turn aside. Uh, what if Moses had not turned aside at the burning bush? Mm. Uh, you know, when we think of all these situations in Scripture where the Lord beckoned or wooed or talked to David or whoever it might have been to, to turn aside, talk to Israel, to the entire nation, sure. to turn aside and they rebelled and refused and how it must have hurt God. And people say, well, you know, God, uh, yes, but God can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. And when we neglect God, and we neglect the Word. Don't, don't ever think, you know, uh, like you just mentioned, this is not, a, it's nothing wrong with it being a habit because it's a good habit, but it's not just a habit with me. It is a necessity. And it goes beyond just a necessity. It is a love relationship between me and, and this book and the God of this book. I, I, Pastor, I could not have made it the last six years of my life without this book mm. and the God of this That's book. That's powerful. I That's mean, I powerful. have been in so many waiting rooms and so many emergency rooms and so many uh, ORs, uh, and this is what I had with me. I knew that I had this with me, and I didn't have a Bible with me, but I had, David said, Thy word have I hid in my mm. heart. And I had this word hit in my heart so that, like you said, when we need it. See, Jesus didn't have to jump off, uh, on his knees all of a sudden in the wilderness. The word was in him. And when Satan misquoted, misused the word, Jesus came right back and said, but it is also written. And he gave him what the, what the truth or the revelation of the word is. And folks, it's so important. The reason we're talking about this subject, about how, how to overcome negative thinking, it's because that the world will program you negatively. Uh, so much that's out there in the world is to program you either negatively or completely carnally. And, and you'll, you'll start to ignore and you'll start to leave the spiritual man alone. And Paul warned us, he cautioned us. He said, though the outward man perish, mm -hmm. the inward man must be renewed day by day. So don't let your, your spiritual life go to sleep. Don't let your spiritual life be neglected. And, and that starts with what we're talking about here tonight. Allow the mind to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We want that mind. We need his mind. We need to think his thoughts. Because when we're thinking the thoughts of God, we're not thinking negatively. 
we're thinking positively and we're thinking in the will of God. You talk about prayer, and you know, he said, when we pray, don't ask amiss just to consume it upon ourselves, but find out what his will is. Somebody said, I wish I knew the will of God. Here it is right here. Uh, you don't have to go looking for it, fast for it. Here it is right here. Just open up the will of God and read it, and you'll find out God's will for you and anyone else and for your whole family. Amen. Amen. Beth, it's so good to see you. I don't know where you're watching from, but uh, Beth Weaver, and then I see Ken and Elaine Schultz from uh, up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, I'm telling you, I've been in Saskatoon many times, and I've been there when it's been 55 below zero. <laughs> I'm glad I, I it's I'm not glad 50. I wasn't with you on that. Well, uh, uh, and then Deborah said, we, we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony, uh, and, and, um, and that's true, you know. See, this is, this is why I, I, you know, probably my favorite thing in the world to do, and some people say, I don't know about that, is I'd rather pray than preach. Now, preaching is fun, mm -hmm. you know, when you've studied and, and, you know, you've got the Word of God in your heart. It, it, it's fun, but, you know, Pastor Al, I get more out of prayer and my list just keeps growing of peoples that I put on there because mm -hmm. sometimes on Facebook sometimes people will say something and they'll say pray for me well I don't want to forget it sometimes I'll just put that on my prayer list because I love praying and again I'm not praying for myself I, I don't very rarely ask for anything mm -hmm. in my time of prayer because there's so many people that I want to ask God to minister to. And you know, many people that done me wrong, I got their name on the list and I don't say, God, get them. Yeah, you don't say that. <laughs> Somebody done me wrong, so. Yeah, no, I'm that. not doing that. <laughs> uh, but some of the ones that's done me wrong and that, that has walked out of my life and said things and hurt me, I, um, I still pray for them and I don't have bad thoughts when I pray for them. I just pray for God's blessings on them Amen. and for them to, to, to be able to enjoy the blessings of God. And I do this, I do this out of love and desire it's not it's not a have to i don't have to force myself to i, I well i need I, I need to go um um i need to go pray but i don't feel like it no you just go pray yes well you know i didn't have to work at talking to linda when we were dating uh, I didn't have to say, well, I wonder what I'm going to say or if I really want to spend any Good additional example. time with her or not. Uh, I drove from uh, my home, well, I actually closed a, a tent meeting out in Douglas, Georgia, and drove there all the way to Fort Pierce, Florida, just to spend 24 hours with her. She was in a revival, and I closed one, and I said, well, I, I don't care how, how much I wanted to be with her because I loved her. And, and we have that same feeling I do about God. I want to be in the presence of God. I intend to be in the presence of God, and I'm going to be Amen. in the presence Amen. of God. Because nobody can stop me but me. If I decide I'm, I want to be in the presence of God, I know how to get there. Number one is presence is always with us. It we is. need to practice the presence of God, but we don't. So when I'm not aware of it, I say, Lord, I know you're there, and I'm going to put myself, I'm going to put everything away right now except you. Amen. So that I can totally concentrate. Now, I, I, this, I know our, our time's getting away, but there's this scripture that we all know in Philippians 4.13. Everybody can quote it right now. Uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But let's go to verse 10 because uh, we, we, that, that verse is so pulled out of context so many times. Verse 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me has flourished again. Paul is saying you once took care of me and you kind of elected me and now you're taking care of me again. Wherein you were also careful but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned. Notice this folks. He didn't always know this. He said I've learned in whatsoever state I am in. He wasn't talking about Texas or Arkansas or Louisiana. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now listen, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. 
I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then there it is, I can do all of these things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, I, I appreciate you reading all of that because that is one verse or one phrase that people do pull out of context. Yeah, they want to do all things through Christ, but they don't want to go up and see uh, how and, he got to that point. And many times people <laughs> quote that and confess that trying to do things that are not the will of God. Exactly. But he plainly told us what I could do. I can do all these things yes. through Christ if I do these things. Exactly. And you know, God's intention for man, uh, God's intention for man was never uh, for us to live negative. But what happened, negativity was not in Adam and Eve until they sinned. Right. But once Adam and Eve sinned, negativity become a part of human nature. Well, you go back to choice. See, yes. they chose the negativity. They, they chose, you know, the devil would say, well, you're going to know more if, right. you, if you eat this fruit. Right. You're not going to really die. And they knew what God said, but they chose to go against God. Isn't that something? Yes. You know, you go back there and they, they I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be in the garden and not have the knowledge that of, of evil, you yes. know. I couldn't yes. even imagine what it's like. But here they were, they chose to, to listen to Satan uh, who had been cast out of heaven. And, um, and you know, when Satan comes enticing, he doesn't come enticing in an in a ugly way. Oh, no. Uh, Wouldn't be a temptation there. Yes, he comes, to, he comes in a way to get your attention and make, you, make it look good. But, you know, God's intention uh, never was for us to, to, to be negative. And I believe it, uh, it affects and limits many believers because they don't confront their negative. They just stay in it and they, yeah. they just keep talking negative and, and living negative. And, and, and they I think talking, it's normal, Pastor. They think it's normal. It, they do. Because that's do. the only way they've ever thought. Right, right. And especially if you come up where negative thinking is. You know, when you was thinking of, uh, not singing those songs, but mentioning those songs, I thought of a restaurant when we lived in Chattanooga. They had several restaurants that's out of business now, and they called it Po Folks. I remember Po Folks. <laughs> you served a tea and a pint jar. Yeah, and then they jar. had chicken, and I don't know, but they... <laughs> they uh, thought and confessed their way out of business by calling themselves po folks. Maybe they should have named it rich folks. <laughs> they should have named it rich folks. But, uh, and you know, I, I, I don't know, they may still be one or two around the world somewhere or another. But well, I know there's some po folks. That, well, we do know there's some po folks. Jesus said they'd be with us always. always. Right. But anyway, I think about that. I thought about that restaurant. I hadn't thought about it in years, but when you was thinking, talking about those negative songs that people sing in the world, hey, Lamont, Bless you. Bless you. I know you just <coughs> slipped on there and probably didn't want me to recognize you, but I just did it uh, right away. So good. you just such an awesome, awesome musician, and uh, you did such a great job for us, and I got so many great memories of you uh, playing here in Dallas, and Amen. he can play the B3. <coughs> My goodness. He can I'd love to hear him right now. Can I break in and just say this, because we're running out of time. I yes, mean, I think we we're are. Out of time. Yeah, we only got four but minutes left. I, I believe, Pastor, that these programs on Tuesday and Sunday as well, uh, that we're bringing to you over uh, this webcast, uh, over uh, elglobal.church or whatever way you, you dial us in, I believe they're blessing you. And uh, I don't think, I know pastors mentioned several times that we don't talk much about money. Sometimes when you don't talk about something, people don't think you need it. And uh, I, I think just the reverse. I believe that if you would sow some financial seed into this ministry, uh, they're going to put it up on the screen here in a second to show you how to give. You can go to our website. It'll lead you step by step how to give. Or you can write a check and mail it to our post office box right there in Capel, Texas. And I just wanted, before we went off, to, to let people know. I, I've had several uh, of my partners through the years. And by the way, I'm, I'm feeling a little slighted because you call me and tell me or you message me and tell me. And you never message us on the program. 
And I told Pastor when I said, you know, I don't know if they're watching or not. They tell me they are, but when everybody else is messaging you, I want to sing that pity song in a second. <laughs> uh, nobody's messaging me. And it's not that I want to notice. I just want to know you're there. And, and the best way you can let Pastor uh, know that you are with him, that you are there, uh, is to tune in and, and watch. And uh, I think you said our, our viewing audience has increased oh, yes. uh, tremendously. Last month, up 82%. Up 82%. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're there and you're watching. Do you realize how easy it would be for you to help us pay our budget every month if you just sent five or ten dollars? I'm talking about all those people. Yeah. They'd take everybody. But if everybody sent five or ten dollars, we'd meet our budget every month. And, you know, I appreciate, really appreciate you bringing this up. I probably wouldn't have tonight because we're, we're you know, I've uh, been having a good time talking about the Word and encouraging people to think positive. And, and this is a positive thing. This is thinking, you know, Absolutely. you mentioned $5. Yeah. You know, somebody said, well, $5 is not much. You know, somebody told me recently, I, I, they sent $30, and they said, well, it's not much. And I said, well, you know, to me, it's not the fact that that's not much or it is much. It's the fact that they care enough to send $30. Yes. Yes. But if people care enough to, to, about what we're doing to, um, um, if people care enough to say, well, I, and, and you know, this day and time, most anybody can get $5. Absolutely. And, and you know, if you get a, you know, we have thousands watching uh, Pastor Al. I yes. mean, it's literally thousands yes. watching. One one broadcast alone, just one broadcast alone, we've had over 160,000 views just mm. on one of our broadcasts. 160,000 views. Now just think if they only sent one dollar if they sent one dollar, see? I mean, that would pay our budget for several months. It's right, exactly. And so, um, I, I, I just appreciate it. And, and let's just spend a minute here believing yes. that that people that watch us day in and day out, you know, because, you know, you can go to Roku, you can go to all these things that people watch us on. And um, I know my TV, I have Roku, and sometimes I go back and I rewatch and and, you know, I'm not just trying to look at myself, but I just get engrossed in what we're talking about yes. and make sure that I'm just, you know, and I get blessed sometimes re-watching. Well, you know, this is our life, Pastor. This is not a show. That's, uh, that's sometimes true. Sometimes it irritates me a little bit, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but some, a lot of, of Christian programs that I watch, they call it a show. Well, I did, this is our show. I, I'm, not, I'm not out here to show. Uh, what we're talking about here is real to me. It is my life. This word is my life. What we're talking about tonight is not just some subject that we reached and, and picked up uh, out of the air. This is something that, that we need to talk about, how people think, and bringing it right back down to the finances. Uh, it's not negative to talk about money. Jesus talked about money a lot. He talked about giving a lot. And don't think it's too small. See, the, 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 the man that, that took his talent, he only had one. The others had more than he did. But he could have taken the one he had and at least doubled it to two like the others did. But sure. no, he, he wrapped it in a handkerchief and, and dug a hole in the ground and hid it. And the reason the Lord said he was cursed is because that he didn't do anything with what he had. The same with the woman that had just the, the, the penny. You know, and Jesus said, she's given more than you all. He didn't mean in, in quantity. She probably gave the least. But she gave out of her penury, out of the little bit she had, she gave something. And you mentioned here a few weeks ago about when you go to the Philippines and countries that are, that are third world countries. And, and people say, well, you can't receive an offering there. God gives everybody an opportunity to give. And you don't have to, to send, I mean, if you've got $10,000, hallelujah. But if you don't, and you only have that $10 or $5, or we said 160,000 people sending a dollar, do you realize what a load that would pull off of, of us financially? 
so that we could kind of breathe a little bit. I mean, we just had to buy a new keyboard, we had to buy a new drum set, we have to buy this, we have to buy that. Everything that we have to buy is not free. And so when you look at us and say, well, all they're doing is sitting there at a table talking, everything you look at here costs money, and it costs money for us to have this website to bring this to you. And every Wednesday when we have a staff meeting, we're talking about how to put more programming on this website exactly. so that 24-7 we want to build this up so that any time of, of, of day or night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can tune in to elglobal.church and eat spiritual food, something that will mature you and, and, and grow you up in God. Yeah. So think about what we're saying here tonight and, and listen to, to us talk about the finances the same as you uh, did when we were talking about the other scriptures. And, and do what God tells you to do. You'll never regret obeying God. Well, that's, that's exactly what I pray that God will touch the people's heart, that they would want to sow a seed. Because, you know, some people, as I said, and I, I don't mean to be redundant, but I do mean to be repetitive. Uh, some people think, well, this is just Facebook and it doesn't cost anything, but we, we broadcast on Facebook, but this is not our main vehicle. Uh, if people would help me, you yeah. know, if people would help me and share this on their page, if you would help me and share this on your page and tell other people to watch us, then our Facebook numbers could go up. Uh, that could really go up. And because a lot of people have... Uh, you know, I've been blessed to know a lot of people in my uh, 60 years of ministry. And so, uh, and Lamont, I see you there, Pastor Sharon, and uh, send our love to uh, you, send Sharon, and you send your love to us. Thank you so much. But anyway, if, if it's just $5, yes. you know, anybody most can get $5. I mean, I'm, I'm not asking you to quit giving to your church, but many people don't have one, but anybody could give $5. I, I, never, I never go to church anywhere and visit and hear a speaker. I always give something. I, I don't care. I always give something. You say, well, you got plenty. You don't know my, you don't know he what I He used to I have. I bought it all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, you know, just, just $5. If, if everybody that was watching tonight sent $5, and I'm not talking about Facebook, but I'm, if everybody was watching and everybody that would rewatch, if they had sent $5, you know what? This keyboard and thing cost $4,090. $4,090. We hadn't paid for it yet. No, oh, I know. We hadn't paid for it yet. We, we brought it home, and, uh, but it's not paid for. Uh, these three cameras, they're not cheap. This microphone I got on my face is not cheap. The one you got on is not cheap. And everything that we do costs money. This table costs money. You know, as you said just a few minutes ago, uh, it costs money to get here. It costs money to go home. And I would hate to have to sit here without this table. Yes, I would too. I would It'd too. It would be rather awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's... Um, it's a blessing. Now, Benny, you, you remember Benny Horn, don't you? Yes, from Alabama. Hi, Benny. Anyway, uh, um, if, if people would just say, I'm going to pray, and God may say $10. Yes. God may say $20. And Bob, he may say to Benny $100. Yeah, he may do that. <laughs> uh, he may say to, you know, that, that person that was telling me that, well, it was only $30. Well, you know, it, 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 the $30 help pay yes. some of the responsibilities yes. and obligations we yeah. have. So I don't want anybody to ever say, well, it's just that little woman you talked about, in the, the widow woman yes. in the Bible, Jesus said she gave more, more than, than all. all. Because some of them she, gave bags of gold. Yeah, some gave, but, but Jesus looked at hers and said it's more. Yes. Anyway, uh, Pastor Al, we got a number of people here. Uh, Kathy down in Tampa saying, I believe you still live in uh, Tampa. Uh, brother, please say a prayer for my uncle Junior. And I say you, mom and dad, was close to Roberta and Junior. I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. But anyway, um, we're going to pray. And um, uh, Benny Horn says, hey, Don, hope you guys are eight good. 
<laughs> well, you know, speaking of Benny again, too, I, I noticed recently he has a family member that's not doing well and probably wants us to pray for her, too. Well, that's good. We will. And I want you to pray as we go off of the air and, and, and pray for Kathy's uh, Uncle Junior here and uh, the different ones. And um, and then we just had, would, could we, somebody get us the prayer request box because they just put... Um, several in there right before we went on the air and um, I, I want you to um, 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 pray and believe God that um, everybody that's watching and, and, and pray that the Lord will speak to people to see what we're talking about here at the end that we, we never spend time on and I'm not apologizing for talking about money no, but no. we don't spend the time here talking about money no. I don't have you know we just we just preach to people love people and encourage people and and pray that the Lord will really speak to some people on that's watching on Roku and and fire TV and all the different ones that God will just touch their heart that uh, 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 and real quick, could they put up the website one more time? Yes. Could you put up the website one more time, eoglobal.church? And, and, and if you'll go to eoglobal.church, and you can see over to the right there, uh, there is the app where you just click that, and then when you click that, that'll just, you can give within seconds. Or if you want to be one that sends in a check, <clears throat> uh, you can send it to the post office box. Pastor Al mentioned that just a few minutes ago. And we'd appreciate very much you, you letting God talk to you and be positive. Be positive and say, I'm going to be one of those that I'm going to step up to the plate and I'm going to send $5 or I'm going to send $10 yes. or $100 yes. or $30, whatever it is. And, and I'm not saying we're going to go off the air if you don't send. I, you didn't hear me say that. No. I, God's well, going to supply going to the need. No, we're not going off. We're on, and we're going to get that 24-hour mm -hmm. network going. And we've got, we've got uh, Benny Horn says, pray for our daughter, Brittany. She's yeah. been having pain in her right side. Also, my sister Sue in Florida has cancer. I know he mentioned on the Internet the other night he wished his mom was there to pray for them because oh. you know, his mom is not with him anymore. Yeah, well, I remember watching on Facebook, um, I remember watching on Facebook Benny going through that with yeah. his mom. and. Yeah. Um, you know, I, Pastor, Benny's uh, known us for a long, long time. Really? Yeah, I, I went and preached in Anniston, Alabama when I was in my 20s. And uh, I guess I've known Benny uh, pretty much. You know, he was a big A.A. Allen fan. Yes, he was. Still is. Yeah, and has uh, worked on those Hammond organs and plays the Hammond organ. And, yeah, uh, so and he's got one. I think he's got a B3. He, he did have a bunch of them. I think he sold a few. I mean, he's... he's I've been in touch with him now for the last several years. Out of nowhere, he, he messaged me, and I was happy to hear from him. But we're going to pray for you, uh, Benny, tonight, and anyone else that has uh, any, any needs. You, you want to go ahead with that before I pray? Yes. Uh, Lamont's saying, Pastor Don, you and your ministry is a blessing to so many people. Thank you for the many years you've given. How do we give again? So can we put the... Um, website up there yeah. again. Does, if, if you look at that, I think that says give, doesn't it, on that particular... Uh, right. Just like if that. they go to EO Global, what that give is, is one of the... The, the boxes. Plate, one of the boxes right. on the website to right. click. And in, and we use the Tithely app, and it's so simple. You do have to put in your email address, and, and you have to do that. But, you know, anything you do on the Internet, that's what you got to do. But it is a secure site. They don't have to worry about anything. They can give. Yes. Oh, any, it's very word. secure, and whatever you give, you know, right. you can give five dollars. You can give any amount you want to yeah. give, you know. Yeah. And um, and when people give and help us, you know, you you immediately get a response mm -hmm. from our our uh, website immediately. And um, um, and I want people to know that. We very rarely talk about this as if this is your first time watching. We very rarely talk about money. I mean, time gets gone. If and we we're do, overtime it's already. Two, three minutes, yeah. yeah two, we're three already minutes. overtime, but I want you to pray for the people. Pray for Benny Hen's sister and. And, uh, Benny Horn. and Benny Horn, I'm, I mean, uh, he said, Mom and Dad used to go to Chattanooga, and they would go to our church, Don's church, yeah. when they were there. You see, I remember that, Benny, when you, your yeah. Mom and Dad used to come. And uh, it's been, 
I don't know, six or seven years ago, I preached in a little church down in Fort Payne, Alabama, and you just showed up there that night. Um, and I, I appreciate that, Benny, and I, I, we, we do really appreciate you very much. So Pastor Al is going to pray for everybody, and you that's given and you that's contemplating giving, I want you to just release your faith as he prays. We love you, Brother Benny, uh, and all of you that watch and, and are part of our, uh, our website family. I'm just going to put the Word of God on top of this box. This box is covered uh, in a map of the world, of the globe, and we get prayer requests from everywhere, not just the United States, but wherever you have a need and wherever you watch us, all you got to do is, is uh, you can, get, again, go to the website. It'll tell you how to get in touch with us. But I want to pray, and I, and I challenge you uh, to, to give what you can. Don't say, well, you know, I don't have $100. Give like the little widow that we just talked about what you can. God will bless what you can give. And if you simply just are, are, are obedient to the Word of God, uh, we're not begging. We don't have to <laughs> beg. We're not beggars. We're, we're giving you an opportunity to invest in the Word of God, sending this Word all over the globe. That's what we want to do, elglobal.church, sending right. this, this word of God all over the world. Father, we ask you right now mm -hmm. as we look into this camera, for every man, woman, boy, or girl, whether they're right here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or whether they're in the Philippines or Rwanda or some part of India, wherever they may be watching us. We know we have in Dubai and we have others that that message us each week, and they have needs. And we pray, God, for Brother Benny, uh, for the needs in his family. We pray for those like him, thousands just like Brother Benny, that may have a, a hurt heart, that their spirits are broken. Uh, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, to send your word through the airways. Send your word, your healing, your anointing, your blessing, your wonderful presence, send it right now as we pray here. Send your presence and your word there to where they are. And as they release their faith, as they release the God that's in them, you're going to overcome them with your goodness and your grace and your mercy. And you're touching them right now as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I know we're over time, but you know, when you get to talking about the gospel, you know, uh, somebody told me about a, a baseball game, I think, that went, um, I forget how many innings. Well, a lot of them go um, a long time. Uh, well, I think it was in Pittsburgh last night, and they oh. were playing the Cardinals, and, and um, I think it went I don't even know. They said many innings it went mm -hmm. into. And baseball's boring now until the playoffs. Well, uh, if, if people can go over time um, in the baseball games and stuff, why can't we have a little more time? Uh, I agree. Uh, you know me. I mean, you and I are both not short-winded. Well, you know, I had, a, I had a preacher call me yesterday, and he said, he, had, he said, how long did you preach Sunday? And I said, too said, long. As long as I could get away with it. <laughs> well, I did. I said, I, I did too long. But uh, anyway, we've enjoyed being here at Lamont, everybody, and Deborah, and then uh, my niece. We're praying for you and uh, uh, your, your situations there. And everybody that's asked for prayer, I, I take these again and I look at them and I go over and make sure that we pray for you because I miss them here on the air, you that's on Facebook. I miss them sometimes because we get busy talking and I can't see everything that everybody says, so I go back and look at them later. But God bless you and don't forget now, Sunday, Sunday, I'm going to be continuing my series on love and this past Sunday it's on Facebook and it's on Don Clowers Ministries uh, I really encourage you to go back I talked about what does love look like and, uh, and this is a great series I mean I'm telling you it's, you're doing a masterful job and it's a subject that a lot of people need to listen to well I got some things to say this this week that I probably have uh, never ever said just like this week some things I talked about and um uh, and, and with 
this day and time, we need to learn more how to to love people and learn not to take offense. That's right. Uh, because <clears throat> somebody said, and you know, I use the scripture that Jesus said, offenses will come. Mm -hmm. You can't stop them. They're mm -hmm. going to come. But you don't have to give in to them. That's right. Well, I, I've got to quit <laughs> preaching. God bless you. And I hope you tune in Sunday morning and share this on your page. Would you do that? Uh, you that's watching by Facebook, would you share it? Now, if you'll just share it on your page. Uh, if everybody watched tonight shared it on their page, then we would have thousands of people uh, all